<clears throat> excuse me. Sorry if you're driving. Sorry if you're listening. Sorry if you've got your AirPods in. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Mr. Robertson. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday. What does Friday mean, team? It means... Friday quiz. Certainly does. Doesn't it, Faith? Good morning. Good morning, Devon B. Good morning, April Hill. Good morning, Hillary Jones, Margaret O'Brien. It's Beetlejuice time. Beetlejuice 2 is coming. Weekly Rushes is coming back. All sorts of stuff is landing on the Chan 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 channel this weekend. Apparently, did anyone know? Okay, let's ask. Let's not say. Let's ask. Don't ask. Say what you see. Don't say what you do. Um, When should a Christmas tree go up? This isn't the quiz. This is just an early morning chinwag chit chat. Let's imagine we're getting a coffee by the coffee machine. When should a Christmas tree go up? Anyone got a clue? I'm just going to look at my various drinks here. Got one of those. Gabrielle says now. Ah, Good chip lollipop whenever you want. You're not a stickler for tradition. First, oh, what's that? About the 25th, says Edward Bevington. Not before the 1st of December. Debbie Pollard, hello, silent sub. Putting yours up this weekend. Hello, my darling. Um, You're kind of closest at the moment. It's the Advent Sunday. It's the first Sunday. It's the first Sunday in December. Reese Roberts, you're putting yours up right now. <gasps> my, my, my. First of the 12th, says Bonnie Delaney. I thought you were giving us a score of one out of 12. And I thought, that's not good, however you look at it. Chin chin. These lovely birthday presents from Dina Dwala. I need an advent calendar where I can get, wonder where I can get one here. Here's the thing about advent calendars. Does anyone else have this? I saw one in a shop the day before yesterday. I went to get it, but I decided not. By not picking it up, have I left myself enough time to find one again? I doubt it. That felt like it was going to move into rhyming couplets, but it didn't. Um, a Juby, lovely cup. Isn't it a lovely cup? Look at that. It says, it says coffee moaning. I'm trying not to hold it over my computer because I'm probably going to spill it. But coffee moaning. Uh, and then we've got Mark's Rocket Fuel. And uh, Nanny Die, if you're out there, sending you love. Hope you enjoyed Green Figured Hell, Ma. It's good to see you got your mojo back, Mum. Don't know where it went. Um, and Nanny Die is joining us on Sunday. Uh, the No Name Sunday show will be is, is a pre-record, but Nanny Die will be joining us on Sunday. And I'm hoping that we're going to be able to do a members live. And we're going to be able to catch up with Nan. She's she's had a busy couple of weeks. How many more? Well, not necessarily busy, but I mean, you know, big, dramatic. So, uh, so it'd be nice to catch up with her. Um, I've got the Nightmare Before Christmas Advent Calendar, Russ. Oh, that sounds good. I've got Beetlejuice. Be- sorry. Um, Catherine Jones, there's loads of advent calendars in our shops. What makes a good advent calendar? We're going to get onto the news. Don't worry, we'll get there. What makes... A good advent calendar. Chocolates. I bought one for the girls years ago with Pringles in it. And of course, all that happened was only the sour cream and chives one got eaten. Um, uh, Anne Marie Anna Marie Shellard says, Advent calendars have become something else. My boys want a Reese's Pieces one. I may include it in their presents. Extortionate. You're right. The thicker they get, the bigger they get, the heavier they get, the more expensive they get too. Um, pucker tea advent calendars, Karis Rees. A pucker, pucker are those, it always makes me think of Jamie Oliver, doesn't it? Yeah, pucker. It's pucker, mate. What does the word pucker come from? Pucker. Uh, Aren't those those sort of, aren't they, um, what are they called? Herbal teas. (laughs) Every time I drink a herbal tea, I imagine it's what it's like chewing on cotton wool. I've bought my three great nephews a Lego advent calendar, Ellery Jones. Lego. Lego's going to make some kind of, there's going to be a Lego renaissance in this household. I made one for my birthday with Kooks and it was so much fun. I mean, she was fast asleep by the end of it, but I mean, I had so much fun. Uh, In fact, she was fast asleep because she'd finished it. And in that role reversal as a parent, it was a very small one. It's over there. It's 
uh, not Boba Fett, it's Man Mandalorian and Baby Yoda. And she finished hers in second. And I was struggling with the flat bits, trying to get them out. I had to ask Maddie to help because I couldn't get my nails between them. Oh my God, how the roles have reversed, guys. No longer a Lego king. All a wow, Lego advent calendar. I'd love that. Do you know what I want to do? I want to... And what we might do on the Sunday quiz, if we can find one, because the reason I'm hesitating is you, you order it, you try and get an advent calendar, it's bloody madness. I'm going to, we're going to do in our competition in the members live, whenever it happens this weekend, hopefully Sunday evening, we're going to give to a winner a Lego advent calendar. After obviously I've received it, opened it all up and done them, then we'll send it to you. Just the empty bit. No, honestly, we're going to get, we're going to a competition for a Lego advent calendar, which means note to self. Find one. <laughs> let me just let me just do that. Uh, Lego calendar. Oh, team, 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 team! It's the final little kind of arrival slipstream into December. Is anyone ready? Is anyone ready for Christmas? Does anyone want to be ready for Christmas? I don't know which drink to go for. I just hang. On, just one sec. I'm just going to get this drink. Hmm. Yeah, which one do I want? Oh, that one. Um, is anyone ready? Ah, Natasha Milton, sick as a dog here, missing Black Friday, which has re been renamed Blue Friday, uh, Blue Monday. Um, uh, Francisco Bastos, I'm coming from home from the official celebration in the city of Vienna for the naming of a plat about the fight and activism against femicide. Wow. The organization I'm in worked on it and it, be it bears our name. That's fantastic. But good on you. Um, Creatorholic, Samp Turbo, not ready. Katie Johnston, I'm almost ready for, you're almost ready for Christmas. What does that mean? Does almost being ready for Christmas mean, or does it mean like, I've done that, I've done this, done that, or does it mean like list, list checking? What does it mean? Bonnie Delaney, nope. Going too fast for me, sweetie, says Helen77. Who, me? Ha, oh, jeez. I think you can watch YouTube on slow Um I love a photo. You love a photo on an advent calendar. Always say, well, being ready. We never are. Yeah, I know what you mean. About, yeah, that's the funny thing, isn't it? You feel you're on top of it. And I think this is the nature of Christmas, isn't it? What happens is there's always a little bit more just out of sight. There's always just a little bit more just, just beyond you. There's always just a little bit more to reach to. And so there's forever a sense of, of incompletion. Oh, our panto opens tonight. Will he be coming to see it for Vlogmas, Ross Out. Oh, my God, if we can. Our, our schedule is looking horrendously busy, but absolutely, if we can, we'd love to. We did We were, We did float by there when we were in Oxford. You weren't there, mate. You had better things to do. Bigger fish to fry. Bigger cooks to harass. Gift got cards made. Gift got cards made. Lynn Sheard. I think I understand what you mean. You've either got them made, you've either been gifted them, or you're saying, give us a gift. I like the cup. I like the cup, but there's something weird. Do you find that some drinks taste different if they come out of different cups? That wasn't really quite coffee-like to me, which is why I have my <laughs> uh, substitute in play. Um, we're not ready. Well, no, we're not ready. Um, no, we're not. We're not ready at all. Um, but we have shot some things. We have shot some bits and bobs. We are having an amuse bouche. Is going to be landing this weekend too. Uh, which is essentially a little taster, a little teaser, a little treat, a little trip round a part of London that will get you in the festive spirit. I look like a twat and the girls are just, you know, boring as hell in shops. I mean, they're never boring, but I mean, you know what I mean? For a bloke, they're boring. So anyway, so anyway, got lots of content to come. So what are we going to talk about today? Let's have a look. Wow, this story is really, I know, now, if this isn't the only reason I pulled this up, but it's also it's significant too. Uh, any of our Irish followers here who are sort of impacted by or close to or perhaps the news coverage in Ireland is more detailed about the riots that kicked off in Dublin. Now, this is curious because we were planning on visiting Dublin earlier this year for a couple does, um, sort of travel vlogging type thing. For whatever reasons, we couldn't. But someone did say, be careful. Uh, things are a little bit tense here when it comes to tourists. And I wondered whether things have got tense for tourists because things, it sounds like, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, things are tense on the topic of immigration. Is that right? Um, it, was it, this, this it appears to be riots that broke out. I'm just going to show you some of the photo. Oh, hang on. I didn't. 
pull the bloody thing up. Hang on, just wait one second. I'm just going to... I've done some images of... Um, oh, here we go. Uh, of the images from last night in Dublin. I'm just going to add this. Where is it? Oh, yeah, it's just coming. Um, wow. Quite terrifying. Mandy Arthur, I'm in Galway, but I have friends who got caught up in it. Terrifying. So it started with a fracas, a stabbing of some form with a family, with children. Was it a race-related incident to begin with? Stacy, Stacy, you've just gifted 10 memberships. That's incredibly kind of you. Incredibly kind of you. Um, well done, you. Um, uh, 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 uh. Okay. Got rid of them. Got rid of them. In. Got rid of them. There you go. Um, hi, James. Who's Joe? Where's James? James Flanagan. Oh, here we go. Yeah, James. I was, I was thinking, what, what, what have you got to say? James, heartbreaking for our city. What we are witnessing are a small group of people who are rioting, not protesting, and using this act to further their violent and racist, hateful cause. So sad says Carla Hate Hatcham, just outside of Dublin. Uh, Lucy Heaney, right-wing groups in Ireland have received backing from right-wing America. It was evident during the abortion referendum. Thankfully, the majority ruled and came out to vote. Um, Nicole Gilroy, it was a tragic uh, assault on three kids and their teacher. My God. Uh, um, Lucy Heaney, right-wing groups in Ireland have received backing from what right-wing America evident during the abortion. Oh, sorry, you've just said that. Yeah, I'm ashamed to say, Ellen, I haven't seen the news as my daughter home from school. Well, here's some of the um, here's some of the images here. Uh, and Miss Tough Cookie, Miss Tough Cookie, I'm just going to put. You. I'm from Dublin. Shocking what happened last night. We don't know what the motive is yet for the stabbing that happened earlier in the day. I'm sensing it could could be. It got oh, Stacy. Stacy, stop, stop, stop. This is very sweet. And you're being like you know, Mother Christmas. But sweetie, that's that's more than, more than enough. Bless you. Very kind. A lot a lot of people are now going to get uh, anonymous uh, memberships, uh, courtesy of, of very, very, very generous Stacy Randall. So bless you, sweetheart. Um, that's very, very sweet of you. Now, finger off the button, please. <laughs> bless you. Um, Catherine Cronin, it's shameful to hear immigrants being blamed. The man that committed the horrific attack should be tried and judged as a man, not as a foreigner. Oh, um, so is that, oh, so could, could, could this, ah, so could it be that there was some kind of attack that happened and it was potentially by someone, oh my God, is this going to be an immigrant kind of migrant kind of standoff? Anyway, these are some of the images from last night. There's a car on fire. This is the aftermath. This morning, um, buses, cars, uh, I think it's a bus, yeah. Um, is that a tram or a bus or a tram or something? Uh, look at this, total devastation. Uh, oh, so Sinead O'Sullivan, let's have a look. The race aspect is that it was an Algerian man, a Brazilian man intervened and took him down. Wow, okay, okay, gotcha. Um, is that... It's that terrible thing, isn't it, when when uh, an incident happens and if, I mean, in a weird way, it sort of reveals the latent racism, doesn't it? That if if upon the action of one person, that the action itself is awful, but the first thing to run towards is race hate, it says, it says almost so much more about the appetite of the person wanting to make it a race thing rather than actually what was the crime first. And maybe that's why the nature of who's done what to who. Has been um, has been kind of obfuscated for 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 for, for these reasons. Um, police are following a, a line, a definite line of inquiry, says the justice minister. Um, Irish police say they're continuing to investigate the circumstances. Uh, the scene was at Parnell Square East. Uh, it remains cordoned off. Five-year-old girl was seriously injured during the incident. Another girl, six, is still getting medical treatment. Um, the boy aged five was discharged yesterday. The adult female aged in her 30s remains in a serious condition. The adult male aged in his 50s also remains in a, a serious condition. But wow, 32 people charged in connection with the riots. Seven vehicles were damaged by fire. Eight Garda vehicles, that's the Irish police, were extensively damaged. 13 properties attacked. Um, just, just awful. Um, Ireland's police chief said we could not have anticipated this level of violence uh, and aggression. Um, 
they're going to be using CCTV evidence. There's a, there's a febrile atmosphere, isn't there, in Europe? If you think of the chap um, who looks like a sort of laughing, uh, a sort of laughing, I don't know, ventriloquist's dummy, the guy who's kind of been, the guy who's been um, voted in, in in Holland. It is it, cause for concern. I mean, I, I posted something on Instagram last night, um, which was uh, an assessment of the devastation in Gaza by a United Nations humanitarian uh, sort of member, um, security member. And... Um, it, it, there are horrendous parallels for any historians here between the way in which the United Nations is being entirely ignored, um, the sort of gradual sort of shift towards the right um, that there is um, across the world, and how the League of Nations, which was a sort of previous incarnation of the United Nations, failed in its mission to kind of keep peace and prevent World War One happening again. Um, so it's just, you know, it just feels like there's a, just a sort of volatile atmosphere. Um, James Flanagan, we need to remember those fighting for their lives today. The attacker was living here for 20 years, an Irish citizen. The man who tackled the attacker was a brilliant Brazilian immigrant. That's an interesting and curious. So, so in a sense, what you're saying is it was the immigrant who sort of saved the day. Um, so for people who are going to try and seize upon this as an example of how migration is a terrible thing. I mean, I, I'm fascinated by what Ireland's attitude to migration is, because, of course, for all the wrong reasons, historically, and I, I suppose some of the right reasons in terms of consequence, you know, for some of the for huge wrong reasons, huge numbers of the Irish population in history have been forcibly migrated or economically have migrated uh, due to all sorts of circumstances, haven't they? Um, across the world. My mum's girlfriend, when we, when I was 10 or 11, her family, she was Irish. And um, yeah, the, the prejudice that her family experienced, and this was back in 1981, 82, was back at the time, you know, with the IRA and all that was was raging and um you know prejudice was massive wasn't it in in this country towards the irish i mean so it was so backward it, it was unbelievable and there was such a sort of stereotypical awful stereotypical control or or perception from the brits of of the irish and and it's just just hideous really i th i i I, th I think the i think ireland has the last laugh in that virtually every significant author of any note and great work of literature is by by someone who's irish so <laughs> chin chin Raise your glass of Guinness if you weren't drinking. I mean, I think I'd struggle being an alcoholic, uh, recovering alcoholic. I mean, because like, everyone likes their beer and, and Guinness in, in Ireland. Sorry, yeah, could be Tim. So, yeah, what is that? Sorry, there is a sort of squirrel sound. Um, so, anyway, uh, so, th yeah, this is just awful. So, obviously, you know, everyone in, in Dublin and in Ireland, it must just be incredibly, incredibly worrisome to see this happen, but... I don't think it was toffee. I don't think it's the first time. I don't think it's the first time, or it's not necessarily a surprise, given what some of you guys have said on here. Um, MeTube, incidents like this are a warning, though. They foreshadow the civil chaos that could ensue when people from the equatorial regions are forced to migrate due to climate change. Very good point. Very good point. I mean, we've said it here before. And it's interesting watching Nigel Farage leaping off to I'm a Celebrity and the whole debate between him and Nella and the whole debate about migration. I mean... For pretty forget forget race culture creed even national identity I'm not I'm not a fan of of um, I'm not a fan of what is it nationalism um, but you can see how if you just had completely open borders you wouldn't be able to have any infrastructure that could last for too long so I think we are slowly on a sort of inevitable kind of treadmill heading towards a crunch point. Where, as you rightly identify, me too, the incident, you know, the, the, the circumstances around the globe are going to lead to more and more people not just coming here. I think there's this kind of real exceptionalism in Britain that we think, oh, we're the kind of absolute destination of choice. I don't think we necessarily are. Um, I think, you know, we might have been at times and we might have a sort of kinder welfare system. Um, but yeah, uh, James Flanagan, the kind of violent toxic masculinity on display by fascist thugs on the streets of Dublin this evening is actually the biggest threat to women and children, not the colour of someone's skin. That is such a good quote. We're going to pop that up there so people can read that. And it's so true. Isn't it curious? Again, it kind of goes back to the same thing around the hate marches. Uh, if for those of you listening, I'm using exaggerated inverted commas there. You know, the kind of the generation of violence, aggression and anger in the sort of far right rather than, yes, of course, there were elements of it in any march, but the vast majority of those in the marches weren't. They were peace-seeking peace, peace seeking people. Um, and, and in fact, the, the biggest threat comes from thuggery. 
and this perception of national nationalism. I mean, I think it's great to be proud of the qualities of your countries, your country or your identity, your national identity, whatever, but not to the detriment of others. Anyway, so as we have so many Irish followers, all of our thoughts are with you guys um, at the moment. Obviously, Ireland in the news for all the wrong reasons. Um, um, obviously, on the Gaza front, the four-day sort of pause in hostilities has started uh, today. I think it started at 5 a.m. our local time. Um and the hostage kind of exchange is going to start. I think 13 hostages, Hamas are giving 13 hostages today. Um, and Israel is going to start the process of releasing women and children from their prisons. Some of the children that are in the prisons are there for stone throwing. Um, so, you know, it's it's a curious exchange. It's a, it's a curious exchange. Um, before we just jump onto that, let me just check this. Uh, 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 Paul O'Farron, it's because three of three children got attacked by a non-national. Some are sick of the way our government are looking after foreigners before our own. But Paul O'Farron, I mean, going back to what James was saying, but it was a, you could argue it was a, uh, a foreigner. I, mean, I don't like that phrase too much, but it was a foreigner who set, solved the situation. I mean, so it's a diff tricky one, that, isn't it? Um, Catherine Crowley in Ireland has never had a viable right wing political, but Dublin thugs are plenty. Okay. Ooh. Um, so, yeah, so fingers crossed. Well, I mean, how do you feel about this pause in the hostilities? I mean, I just wanted to share this with you. I just, I'm curious to know what, and whenever we get into this debate, it, the, 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 there's always that sort of tense moment where it's like October the 7th was a ghastly, horrific, terrorist attack let's not okay so ghastly and what happened is re utterly reprehensible provocative israel had the right to self-defense we said it here we've always said it here but then there's a point at which self-defense becomes something else and that's what i think um is perturbing so many people and and i'm just curious to know that even though this um uh, Khan Travel says the IDF still shooting Palestinians, though it's a ceasefire on paper. Well, absolutely. And apparently a rocket fired off into Israel sort of immediately after the ceasefire happened too. So there are going to be lots and lots of claims and counterclaims on both sides that this isn't being observed. And I'm absolutely certain that on the ground, there's going to be all sorts of manoeuvres going on that are, that are in breach, essentially, of what's uh, of a fraught and fragile pause. Not necessarily, this isn't a ceasefire. This is, this is a pause. Um, but what I've noticed is this chap, you know, the former Obama aide we talked about yesterday, you've got, who's been sort of charged with race hate who for harassing Egyptian street, um, uh, you know, um, what are they called? Uh, stall holders, you know, food holders. Um, uh, what I'm noticing about a, n a number of these is that, um, oh, just one second. What I'm noticing is, is that the more extremist opinion is invariably that or those of the Zionist sort of approach to things. Because um, there are countless organizations and countless Jewish people, countless Israeli Jewish people who don't agree with the way in which things have proceeded after Israel's absolute right to some form of self-defense or response to October the 7th. Um, but I'm curious to know what the Zionists or extreme sort of ardent extremists who believe that Palestine should be absolutely, you know, raised to the ground and reduced to rubble, which is, let's face it, ministers have said this. One minister even suggested using a nuke. Um, what would they say when the Pope says this is not war, this is terrorism? Now, to clarify what he was talking about here, he's talking about the conflict. So he's he both identifies October the 7th as an act of terrorism. And I personally think where we're at in this now is that there was a period of time, and I don't know what that period of time, I mean, what, what, I suppose what I'm asking here is, if the Pope says this, given what's happening to some people in uh, show business, in the media, in just members of the public on marches, the way in which people are being villainized for calling out the response by Israel after the initial sort of period of shock, trauma, a desire for self-defense, however that looks. 
the fact that people are silencing people or it feels like people are trying to silence people from being able to comment on this by saying you're anti-Semitic, you don't want Israel, it's absolute nonsense. It's a total fallacy and it's an attempt to silence criticism of a campaign that now has gone too far. So what would they say? Do they say now that the Pope is a supporter of Hamas? Is that what, the, is that what would be suggested here? That even, because the Pope is saying, really nothing more than what a vast number of people are saying. This is not war, this is terrorism. Now, to be clear, he's not just talking about the Israeli attack, but he's talking about all the violence that's happened. And I think that's the important point. I think it's really important to identify both sides of the equation. You know, for families, innocent children and women, okay, because for some reason we're managing to get this narrative in the mainstream media that if you're a man, a grown man who lives in Palestine, you're probably a mass. That, that's, that's the inkling. Now, what I would say about that is I don't think they probably are necessarily Hamas, but I'm sure as hell they're not going to be particularly favorable to a nation that's bombing them, which leads you to the next really challenging dilemma for Palestinian Let's say Palestinian men. Let's do, let's be sexist here, and let's let's chop up the innocents into women, children, and men, because it strikes me that of all these categories, men are the most viable target. Because potentially, I guess, or you know, uh, existentially, they could be soldiers, right? So, men. If I was say, here's a dilemma. If I was the father of four children, my wife, and we're living in Palestine, and we're being attacked, and the country is being taken over, and an Israeli soldier is coming at me with his, you know, other soldiers, and I defend myself in any way with a gun, with a knife, or whatever, am I automatically then going to be called Hamas because I'm defending? And I think the reason I want to flag that up is. It presents a real problem. When people call this a war, generally wars happen between two armies. Now, the, then you get to the problem of how do you identify who Hamas is? You know, we can see that the majority of the casualties that have happened are women and children. Are they, are they Hamas members? Are they wannabe Hamas members? Are they the future Hamas of tomorrow? And I think that narrative is, it has crept into, unfortunately, a huge number of people on the... Israel, Israeli government side of the equation or the Zionist side of the equation where there's a sort of disposability or there's a sort of collateral damage that that's, we're happy to take. No one would to tolerate collateral damage of an, any attack on, on Israel at all. Like no one tolerated or wanted the attack on October the 7th. But likewise, it has to be the same back uh, the other way, right? So I just think it's curious. I just think it's curious that we're in a situation now where if, if someone like the Pope, so the United Nations have called this out in many different ways for what it is, but because it doesn't chime with what the America, um, you know, Biden and certain governments that want to be in support of Israel, because it doesn't chime with them, they just ignore the United Nations. And I think that's really dangerous because we all point to the United Nations. If the United Nations, when they did, said Syria, this is wrong, Russia, this is wrong, this isn't about whether the United Nations has any impact. That's a different debate. But we all in the West go, the United Nations has said this when it's Russia. The United Nations has said this when it's Syria. And the United... But it's like, oh, well, we don't need to listen to it. I mean, it's so blatantly obvious that we're picking and choosing the bits of what the United Nations say is right or wrong. Now, the, the devil is in the detail. What is self-defense? And of course, for many people in Israel, what self-defense is, is wiping out all of Hamas. But here's the problem bombing and killing entire sectors of society that are not identifiably soldiers will leave a population even more angry and anti-Israel than they were before. I, it strikes me that there's an emotional contingent to this and then there has to be a more strategic contingent, contingent to this. What can Israel do to stop Hamas? Bombing them as they're doing it now isn't going to get rid of Hamas. I think you may end up being able to say, we've killed everyone in Hamas, but you're not going to kill the sentiment of resentment and fury that this is going to aggravate. I, I genuinely think, I think I've said all along, Natasha, absolutely right to smack hard, smack in, smack hard, 
huge hit, and then pause and then get all the international community in, get the United Nations in, observe some of the international organizations, let them come in and start to carve this up, because then everyone would be more favorable to Israel, and everyone would be more favorable to a two-state solution. It, it's obvious. I mean, the, the, thing I, the thing I would say, Natasha, to that is, this is all going to have to stop at some point. And at the point that Netanyahu decides to stop the assault, how is he going to define having got rid of Hamas? I don't, I, I don't think there's ever going to be a moment where you go with a sort of, you know, a list and tick it off and go, done. I don't think there's ever going to be that moment. And I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a gaslit promise that's exploiting an intense fear and emotional trauma. That's where I think Netanyahu is at fault, because I think he's promising something, something that can't be promised. What do, you, what do you think, Natasha? I mean, I'm genuinely, I mean, that's how it, that's, I mean, just looking at it historically, this will end. This violence has to end at some point. And how it ends, it's not going to end with everyone suddenly just sitting back and going, oh, brilliant. Okay, that's all, that's all done. Of course, we won't, of course, we won't attack you again. My, what my advice would have been to Netanyahu is, Hit hard, go in, you know, do something. You had, they had to have some right to some kind of response. But then at the point that the United Nations and, and International Criminal Court, everyone's saying, hang on, this has gone too far. If they'd actually gone, all right, whoa, pause. I think that would have, that would, that would, that would have done a lot for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Look, no one's apologizing for Hamas funded by Putin. Look, everyone's funded by everyone. You know, the Americans fund all sorts of pressure groups, um, you, you know, and, and armies. You know, the IRA was getting armaments from parts of America. I mean, you know, so, yeah, that's, that's not news. But in terms of how do we solve this, I don't think continuing to... Okay, here's another, here's another point. Even if you want to keep going, the, strat the, the, the tactics need to change so that there's less civilian, ca civilian casualties. You know what I mean? I just think it's, it's, it, there's this idea that there's no other alternative other than the way that it is happening. And I think that comes across as arrogant. I think it comes across as inflexible. I think it comes across as inhumane. And I think that does a disservice. And in a weird way, that will aggravate any sense amongst, you know, really rational, you know, human loving people to go, hang on, I, you know, I mean, most people know that what Netanyahu is doing isn't representative of everyone who lives in Israel. We know, you know, everyone knows that. Of course, everyone knows that. But the extremism of him and many of the extreme right that are sort of tugging the strings at the sides of government are a real cause for concern. So I just think it's odd. I think we're going to have four days where, yeah, obviously it's great for the host for the families of the hostages. It's absolutely brilliant, you know, that they get back, they get their family, their relatives back. You know, these children and women are being released from the Palestinian prisons, um, you know, but where this moves next. And if they literally like after four days go, right, turn it all on, bomb, 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 bomb. It's like, it's just weird, isn't it? It's just sad. Um, oh, wow. God, look, we've, we've run over. Um, what else have I got in the da, 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 da. Yeah, film, just, just quickly, film targeted by trans rights protesters is shown at university. This is a documentary. I don't know if anyone heard about this called Adult Human Female, directed by Dr. Deirdre O'Neill and Professor Mike Wayne, described as the first UK documentary feature to look at the clash between women's rights and trans ideology. This is a film that the trans communities and many parts of the trans community have managed to, Edinburgh University have managed to prevent the screening of, uh, but there were huge protests as it was finally shown. Um, again, I just think it's all about debate. I just think we live in an age, I, I keep being, I keep returning to that documentary um, on Netflix, uh, The Social Dilemma, where, you know, algorithms just keep taking people to more extremes rather than actually meeting in the middle to talk about this stuff. Um, so that film's been been already a tra oh, Aaron tell us already a transphobic title. Let's have a look again. What um, adult human female? 
I mean, I haven't seen it. And unless you've seen it, you can't really comment on it. And I do, I am very cautious about, like back in the day when um, The Last Temptation of Christ and, you know, there would be protests outside cinemas calling it blasphemous. And I, I remember doing interviews with people outside it saying, have you seen it? And they'd be like, no. And I'd be like, well, how do you know it's blasphemous? It might not chime with, um, it might not chime with religion in the way that you see religion, but it might actually, and it is The Last Temptation of Christ, it's quite affirmatory. I mean, is this film anti-trans or is this film, is the, it is being pro-female anti-trans? I don't know. It, it, you know, is it, here's something that I don't understand. And maybe, uh, Erin, and I'm asking this genuinely. Because we, we had, and Nadia mentioned this, uh, I don't know if you saw it, was it Gender Quake? I think it was a really, inter- I caught the tail end of it, I didn't see all of it, but it was really compelling and interesting film about, you know, um, non-binary sort of youngsters all get, coming to terms with who each other was, what, what each other was, and where one sat on this sort of sliding scale, if you like. Um, what I, sometimes what I get confused by is... I can kind of understand the non-binary aspect of not sitting on, you know, maybe leaning one way more, leaning the other way more, but just being your own thing, you know, not 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 feeling extremely one or the other. And I suppose I get confused sometimes because I think if there if there is this sliding scale, is is part of that sliding scale also about being a sort of biologically born woman versus being a woman who's transitioned, and for there to be a difference between the two isn't a bad thing. Does it have to be a bad thing? Does it have to be a bad thing? I suppose that's the question I'm asking. Does, does it have to be bad? I don't know. Is it necessarily bad? I, you know, it's weird because I've, you know, sp- spoken to my mom and she knows a few lesbians who feel that there is some, there's a lot of kind of complications around, around a sort of hostility or anger where actually there isn't hostility or anger there or meant sometimes i think confusion or a misunderstanding or a struggle to or a struggle to understand can sometimes be made worse for fear of being being able to ask questions and i think sometimes we're getting to a situation with this where to be able to ask and i think that's why this documentary series was so resonant resonant uh, res- resonated so much for now was it felt like it felt like all questions could be asked without anyone taking offence. See what I mean? I'm just curious to know. That's that's me, Aaron. But yeah, I mean, I just you know what I mean. I just I think to be able to talk about it, and so one can either look at a film like this and say this is anti-trans, or I would look at some this film as this film isn't the definitive answer on anything. It's a film. So isn't this film, like another film made by someone else from the trans community, just part of the discussion or part of the kind of getting to getting to know? As long as it's not promoting prejudice. I mean, I think this, again, it's a little bit like the Israel-Palestine thing. You know, to ask a question isn't to be engaged in hate or to throw a spotlight or a magnifying glass over an extremist desire to prevent something being said isn't doesn't mean you're supporting. For example, uh, fans of Celtic, the Celtic Football Club, the football club has been given a, a fine by UEFA because uh, members of its crowd uh, wave the Palestinian flag. There's no talk of there being any sort of anti-Semitic chanting or anything like that, not, nothing at all. But if the act of holding a Palestinian flag is seen as provocative, are we not getting into a really tricky place? So if the act of, say, I don't know, talking about your rights as a biologically born woman Is that provocative necessarily? It shouldn't be, just as it shouldn't be provocative for a trans woman to express their feelings. Do you know what I mean? I just just think sometimes an extremist response to things or a knee-jerk reaction means that we close down conversation. Uh, Me too. The loudest voices on both sides too often hang on extreme examples rather than looking at the common ground. Um, uh, Must cast 64. I'm in the Netherlands. What's happened in the election makes me feel sick. Talked about him yesterday. Uh, Catherine Cronin, so many people seem to want an excuse to lash out. I can bet that the rioters, right-wingers in Dublin last night sang IRA songs. Interesting. So it's more about anger and where can they fit? It is. It's about frustration and fury. And where can they most readily fit that fury? Where can any of us most readily fit that fury or injustice? Uh, Devon B, it feels at times being a woman is frowned upon or getting lost in expanding world of fluidity. I want all to feel comfortable in what they feel, but not everyone gives that same space back. That's that's a really nice way of putting it, Devon B. Thank you. Um, oh, Erin, here we go. The problem with the understanding is what you understand to be male and female isn't even true. People talk as if you can't change your gender and and as much uh, and your sex. 
I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I, I, doesn't the trans thing then become a problem of language? A noun, you know, the whole noun thing? I mean, then it becomes quite sort of... And maybe the challenge there to society is it is it's reaching beyond language. And I suppose we need systems, don't we, that make sense of things. And those systems reduce things to... I always remember reading a poem in a feminist uh, anthology of poems when I was a child, when I was doing A-level. Bread and Roses was that. God, I can remember that anthology. And there was a poem, and in the poem, the feminist poet, she wrote about a baby's point of view of a mother and the mother and balloons. But she wrote it like the baby didn't see the balloons and it didn't see the mother. It just saw colour and love and that abstraction. And the idea was that, you know, the, the word mother and the word balloon weren't sufficient for either thing. But the whole thing was beautiful. Um, being asexual, Tim. Hi, Tim. Hope you're well. I don't fit in any box and therefore I can be neutral. There you go. Um, uh, Tez, we judge others, but justify ourselves. Wow. Wow. That very beautifully put, Tez. Uh, Aaron Bullamore, because your uh, trans rights don't take away women's rights. There's no debate to be had there. Allowing trans women to exist doesn't threaten women in any way. Okay, and so would you agree that even, say, say even if this film is has opinions that we don't like, it should still be made, right? Or it should still at least be able to be screened. I mean, I think in a weird way, what I would want to do is if I was part of the trans community protesting it is see it, go in and see it and then argue it. That would be that would be what I'd want to do. OK, other bits of news. Oscar Pistorius is appealing. Um, he, the, his brother, uh, the brother of Reva Steenkamp says he should stay in jail. He's he's appealing for parole. Uh, he's been in prison since 2014. Um, so he's appearing in front of the parole board today. So that story could bounce back. P. Diddy, after settling out of court uh, on a previous um, charge or civil case that someone was, was bringing against him, he settled, didn't he? He uh, undisclosed settlement. He's being accused again of drugging and sexually assaulting a student in New York in 1991. So it would seem that um, these stories are becoming more frequent around P. Diddy. Um, and I just wanted to show you the, oh, and also uh, just before we move on to the quiz uh, quickly, uh, scientists baffled after extremely high energy particle detected falling to earth. Is this a cause for concern? I was speaking to Kika this morning. She said, oh, I just sometimes, no, Maddie, I was, uh, sometimes I just get this feeling that something awful is going to happen out there. And I'm going, well, it's funny you should say that. I should have probably say it, said this. Uh, they, they found a sort of cosmic ray that they can't explain, a cosmic ray that um, uh, hit, hit hit Earth, and they can't work it out. They can't work out if it de demonstrates something they never really knew in the first place. But what is a cosmic ray? Experts have been left wondering how the event could have happened as the particle appeared to emerge from the local void. I didn't even know we had a local void. An empty area of space bordering the Milky Way galaxy. Why has no one told us about the empty void? The empty void. Uh, sorry, the local void. It's a local void. So we've got a local void out of which this huge cosmic ray emerged. What the fuck? And I just thought I'd show you this woman on um, woman on oh, where is it? Uh, woman on plane threatens. Well, let me show you this. Be over here. Okay. Sorry, everybody. Are you serious? I don't give a fuck. Yeah, woman threatens to wee in aisle on plane. A woman on a Frontier Airlines flight threatened to pee in the aisle when a flight attendant blocked her from using the restroom. I mean, you know, there have been times where I've thought this rule is ludicrous. But wow. <coughs> wow. Going back to the cosmic ray, maybe the cosmic ray happened at the moment she dropped her pants. Has anyone tried to connect the timing of the two? Maybe she is the cause of the cosmic ray. And finally... Cambridgeshire town split over wonky Christmas tree. Uh, let me show you this. Oh, have I got the wonky? Uh, yes, I've got it here. Sorry, that's Dublin. Wonky Christmas tree. I quite like a wonky Christmas tree myself. Did the plane get lighter, Edward Bevington? She didn't actually do the wee, I think. Um, but yeah, so do you want to have another, have another moment? Of that? That's quite something. I'm ready to be over here. Okay. Sorry, everybody. 
So what I think is quite sweet about that is she actually apologized ahead of it. She's like, look, guys, I'm really sorry. I've got to do this. I'm going to damn my pants and threaten to wee all over the aisle. Sorry about that. Um, I'm wondering whether if she did do that, whether she, I'm such a private weir. I couldn't have done that. Like, like Tina Turner once said, she's a private dancer. I'm a private weir. I couldn't do that. I couldn't threaten to do that. I just couldn't have done it. Anyway, let's get to the quiz. Let's get to the quiz and um, and let's do it. Let's do the quiz, guys. So uh, for those of you who are in the know, you know what happens now. It's uh, it's 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 this. It's quiz time. Fuck off Friday. Oh mate, it's the quiz. It's the quiz. This is so cool. Get your pens and paper. Get your pens and paper. <laughs> Oh, fuck off, fuck off Friday. There we go. Okay, let's do it. Let's get this cracking show on the road and let's get done and dusted. So you can get seven out of seven. Uh, where are we? Quiz of the week. You all good? You ready to go? Question one. K-pop stars Blackpink were awarded honorary MBEs by the king to coincide with the state visit by South Korea's president. But which of their hits was played at the changing of the guard outside Buckingham Palace? Was it A, do-do, 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 do-do? Was it B, how you like that? Or was it C, Pink Venom? Which of those tracks was played whilst they were changing the guard outside Buckingham Palace? Was it A, do 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 Or was it B, how you like that? Or was it C, Pink Venom? Oh, let's have some of this. Anyone here who used to drink or still drinks? Oh my God, that turmeric is a killer. Do you ever used to say when someone was drinking, get it down you? I did. Okay. Uh, the answer is A. Do 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 do. Question two. US President Joe Biden celebrated his 81st birthday on Monday, making him the country's oldest leader ever. Which former president was next oldest by the time they left office? Was it A, Eisenhower, B, Reagan, or C, Donald Trump? Biden celebrated his 81st birthday on Monday. He walked into a door. Uh, making him the country's oldest leader ever. Which former president was next oldest by the time they left office? So was it A, Eisenhower, B, Reagan, or C, Donald Trump? Whilst you're answering that, can I just say, I think we're really missing satirists and comedians being able to, because we live in such a sort of, and unfortunately this is the bad end of political correctness. It's like never more, more than now have we needed someone to be able to satirize even something as serious as the israeli gazan sort of conflict to be able to take to a logical extension how ludicrous some of these things are all of you virtually are getting this right it's b it's reagan question three Aust oh guys it's a cricket question australia beat india in the final of the men's cricket world cup in ahmedabad having lost to them earlier in the tournament. But which was the only other team to defeat the eventual champions? Oh, my God, I'm a cricket. I used to like cricket. Which was the only other team to defeat the eventual champions? A, England. B, Pakistan. Or C, South Africa. Bit of guesswork here, I'm afraid. Julie, too correct. Which is it? England, A, Pakistan, B, or South Africa, C? Which was the other team to defeat the eventual champions? Australia. Rio Chap says South Africa. Julie says England. I think we'd have heard about it, wouldn't we? Um, bit of a bit of a bit of a steer there, bit of a clue. The answer is C, South Africa. Question four. Sir Patrick Valance, the UK's government former chief scientific advisor, gave, advice, gave evidence at the COVID-19 public inquiry. Much attention focused on his diary entries. Which of the following did Patrick Valance not write? Which of these did he not right. A, the ridiculous flip-flopping is getting worse. B, there must be no more magical thinking. Or C, the PM is the only rational voice in the political side. Wow. Which of those did he not say? A, the ridiculous flip-flopping is getting worse. B, there must be no more magical thinking. Or C, Prime Minister is the only rational voice on the political side. Um, I've gone for C. I've gone for C, but Catherine Cronin, Anne-Marie Shellard, Sarah Fox, Mitchell Hofstein, Faith Goodman. We're wrong. Can you believe he actually said that? He said the PM is the only rational voice. Reese Roberts is right. It's B. There must be no more magical thinking. Imagine never having magical thinking. 
Question five. A Nigerian music fan said they were surprised to get a reply in Pidgin from a global star after complaining on social media that their world tour was not visiting the country. Which star was it? Was it A, Madonna, B, Nicki Minaj, or C, Pink? Uh, I think Pidgin is, uh, is it Nigerian? It's an African language. Um, a Nigerian music fan said they were surprised to get a reply in Pidgin. Oh, sorry, yeah, in Pidgin from a global star. Which one was it? Was it A, Madonna, B, Nicki Minaj, or C, Pink? Which of those replied in Pidgin? I'm, pre I'm pre presuming I'm pronouncing that correctly. Is it Pidgin? Is that right? Faith Goodman says Pink. Faith. Not too sure how well you're doing today. Uh, Margaret O'Brien says B, Nicki Minaj. Carol Aveyard says pink. Lynn Sheard says pink. But Ellen says B and Ellen's right. It's Nicki Minaj. Question six. Tributes were paid to novelist, critic and poet Dame A.S. Byatt. Mum, you'll be sad about this that she'd passed away, who died at the age of 87. The renowned writer won the Booker Prize for her 1990 novel Possession. Which of her other works was also nominated for the Booker? Was it A, the children's book? B, the genie in the nightingale's eye? Or C, a Whistling Woman. Which other book by A.S. Byatt, novelist who died this week, was also nominated for the book? Was it A, The Children's Book, B, The Genie in the Nightingale's Eye, or C, A Whistling Woman? And someone's just saying that Pistorius has been freed. Are we? Is that true, Pistorius? So look. News. Five hours ago, three hours ago. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, breaking? Oscar Pistorius, Pistorius is to be freed on parole. It's come through. Thank you for that, Russ. Um, former Paralympic champion Oscar Pistorius is to be freed from jail on parole. Ten years after murdering. Um, the parole board has set his release for the 5th of January 2024. Steenkamp's mother did not oppose the bail, but said she wondered whether his huge anger issues were truly dealt with in prison adding she would potentially be concerned for the safety of any woman who now comes into contact with him. She chose not to attend the parole hearing. Her husband and Reva's father, Barry, died earlier this year, and she said the strain on them both had been immense. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. What do we think of that? Uh, just going back to the answer to this, the answer was A, the children's book. That's big news. Thanks for highlighting that, Russ. It didn't pop up on the screen. Uh, and finally, question seven. Anyone on six? Americans celebrated Thanksgiving as dinner tables across the country groaned with roast turkey and all the trimmings. Uh, but what were the names of the two birds pardoned from being cooked in the annual White House ceremony? What were the names of the two birds that Biden said, you're free to? Was it A, Brittany and Taylor? Was it B, Jason and Travis? Or was it C, Liberty and Belle? We did touch upon this earlier in the week, actually. Uh, Ellen's still one out of six. Better than nothing, though. Better than nothing. Um, Natasha, yeah, Natasha, okay, Natasha. Ellery Jones, two. That's not bad. Me, two, one. Wow, okay. Uh, he only got 12 years in the end, said Mr. Cardinal. Yeah, curious one. Um, so what was the answer? Sorry, what was the question? Uh, what were the names of the two turkeys that Biden freed for Thanksgiving? Was it A, Brittany and Taylor, B, Jason and Travis, or C, Liberty and Bell? Uh, Russ Souch is correct. It's Liberty and Bell. So correct. Co correct. Congratulations. Who who got what and who did well and how did you all do? Who got? Did anyone get seven out of seven? Helena B's got one out of six. So I'm guessing that's not it because who's got what? <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> Sorry, I don't, don't know how I did that. I <laughs> didn't even lift a buttock. That was quite something, wasn't it? Um, two out of seven to Sarah Fox. I got one, and that was a guess, me too. Okay, well, you're going into the weekend almost a loser, but not quite, which is quite nice, isn't it? Guys, have a lovely, lovely Friday. Um, as I say, all sorts of stuff is going to be landing over the weekend. Um, coffee moaning tomorrow morning. Um, uh, no Name Sunday show pre-record is landing uh, on Sunday. A li uh, members live with Nan. Nanny died, my mum. Um, movie stuff will be landing. Napoleon is released this weekend. Uh, all sorts of stuff coming towards you. And of course, uh, the amuse bouche, a little tease, a little kind of pre order, a sort of appetizer for incoming vlogmas. So, guys, and a huge thank you again to Stacey for all of her incredibly generous memberships, which many of you 
will have will have received. So a yeah, big thank you to, to Stacey. And so going to Friday, having a 